We glad that Christmas is finally here. We are so happy that you are here to celebrate with us this evening. Welcome. Um, we do ask if if you are a, a guest here, or this is your first time to be here, if you have any questions, our welcoming desk will be open and we'll have people back there to answer any questions you have. Um, just one announcement tonight. It, well, actually, there's two I like. So... Announcement number one is that we will just have one service this Sunday at 10 o'clock. Um, so it'll be kind of a com combination of all our services. Uh, it'll be about an hour, and we'd, it'll be here in our sanctuary, and we'd love to invite you back for that. Um, also, at the end of our service, um, we're going to end it in kind of a special way. There won't be a benediction. Um, we're just going to follow each other out, and you will be able to figure it out pretty easily. So uh, it won't take a lot. Um, on that note, we do welcome you. We thank you that you have come to celebrate the birth of our Savior with us this, this evening. <laughs> and we can't wait to see what gift Christ brings us today. Would you prepare your hearts for worship? best family comes to light our Christmas, our Advent candle and our Christ candle, uh, we're going to ask you to stand and when you're seated, if you wouldn't mind scooting a little bit closer together, we're family here tonight. So pretend we're family and scoot closer so we can get as many people in here as possible and ushers, there is a whole row up here in the front. Please stand if you're able for the lighting of the Advent candle. On this most holy night, we relight the four candles in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and love. Tonight, we light the Christ candle as we rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in a manger. Please pray with me. As, as, your, as your love has been revealed in all of its fullness. We pray that love may abound in our hearts. Grant us the spirit of Christ, that we may live in the fullness of him. In his name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
And as our ushers come forward, would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, we do thank you for the blessed gift of your Son, our Savior. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured out on all of us this year. We ask God that as we return to you our gifts, we pray that you take these gifts, that you use them to support the ministries that they will go to. Lord, May people come to know you and the glory of your Son through our offerings. God, we celebrate Christmas. We thank you for the birth of your Son. We thank you that over 2,000 years ago, the Word became flesh. In your Son's most holy name we pray. Amen.
Now we'd like to invite up our children to be part of a special kind of Christmas story adventure. So come on up. We need, as, we need all the kids because we need actors and help and, and actresses extras and actresses. Ooh. Hi. Wow. Keep coming. This is so good. I am so glad to see all of you this evening. I just love that we have so many little children. What's your favorite thing about Christmas? You get presents. You get presents. Thank you. you high five. Yeah. Oh, who said Jesus? Okay, what else? Okay. Family? Baby Jesus. Well, yes. Love. Well, you know, I have lots of favorite things about uh, Christmas. Yeah, I like to be with family, and I was with some great, some grandchildren and great-grandchildren this afternoon to celebrate Christmas. And I, it was just so lovely. But you know one thing I like about Christmas a lot since I was a little boy? I like stories. I like Christmas stories. And most of all, I like stories about the baby Jesus. So can I share one of those stories with you? Can we read just, it's a very short story, but it's the story of baby Jesus. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read, and we're going to get some actors and some actresses up here. Okay? Are you ready? Born in a stable. A long time ago, a young woman called Mary... lived in a village. One day, an angel (coughs) an angel okay (laughs) visited Mary. He had some amazing news. You are going to have a special baby and you must call him Jesus, said the Mary was happy because she knew her baby was God's son. So she married Joseph. Who was the carpenter in the village. And they spent time getting things ready for the baby. It was nearly time for baby's baby to be born. But the governor of the country wanted to count everybody, and this meant that Mary and Joseph had to travel a long way on a donkey. (laughs) I didn't... Oh, oh, there's the donkey already. Okay. And with the donkey, they traveled a long way to Bethlehem. Mary was very tired when they arrived in Bethlehem. There were no rooms left at the inn. And the kind innkeeper (laughs) felt sorry for Mary. He said, I have a warm stable where you can stay. Soon afterwards, the baby was born. Mary laid him in a manger. All the animals. We need animals.
all the animals were pleased to share their stable with Jesus. Some shepherds Some shepherds were looking after their sheep. <laughs> Don't be. Me. So. Some shepherds were looking after their sheep in the fields near Bethlehem. Suddenly, they saw an angel. A special baby has been born in Bethlehem. Then the sky was filled with many angels. So the sky was filled with many angels singing praises to God. When the angels had gone, the shepherds decided to see the baby for themselves. They left their sheep and they ran down to Bethlehem. The shepherds found the stable and crowded into the doorway. They were so eager to see the baby. And when they went back to their sheep, they were very happy. They told everybody they met about baby Jesus. Now, in a far-off country, there were some wise men. <laughs> wise men, wise men. <laughs> or be a king? So, in a far-off country, there were some wise men who watched the stars. One night, they saw a new star. <coughs> Who's the star? A new star. It means that a king has been born, said one of the wise men. We must go and find him, said another. The wise men packed their bags and set off on their camels. It was a long, hard, hard journey that took many, many weeks. And they followed the new star all the way to Jerusalem. Finally, the star led the wise men to Bethlehem. They found Jesus with his mother. And they knelt down and they gave him expensive gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. You know what? They knew they had found the new king at last. Isn't that a wonderful story? I love that story. And you know what? Let's, we're going to sing a song now. And all of you, I want all of you guys to, to, to help me sing. We're going to sing Away in a Manger. And actually, the children want to invite you, want to invite all of us here in the congregation to sing together. This beautiful song from this beautiful story, Away in a Manger. Just the kids. Okay. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lays down his sweet head. The stars in the sky.
Thank you, children, so very, very, very much. God bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas Eve and a great Christmas Day tomorrow. Good evening, my friends. What an incredible, blessed night this is. Amen? Amen? What a wonderful opportunity to be together to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is such a blessing to be with you tonight. And I want to share with you a word from the Old Testament. I'm not sure I've ever used this scripture for Christmas Eve, but this evening it just felt appropriate. So it will be on the screen if you would like to follow Isaiah 9, verses 2b through 7. Hear these words from the church's book, and together let us listen for God's word speaking to us this evening. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors... And all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. And there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Won't you pray with me? Holy God, what an incredibly special time this is tonight. As people are gathered here to celebrate the birth of your son. And this evening, O oh God, may the words of our mouth, my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight because you, O oh God, are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. For unto us a child is born. Those are the King James Version words of the lesson that we just shared. Many of you can echo better with the King James Version on that classic scripture. What do those words mean for each of us this evening as we gather here from all over? Not just Texas, but from other parts of the country. And perhaps from out of the country. As we gather here tonight, there are many things that are different about each one of us, but one thing unites us, and that is the gift of Jesus Christ. The gift that has been given to each one of us, no matter where we are from, no matter what we have done, no matter what lies before us. This is not just some random gift given generally to everyone, but it is a gift given personally and uniquely for each one of you because you see God knows you so well that he knows exactly what you need and when you need it. 
As a church family, we've recently been involved in a sermon series looking at various characters in the Bible. Most recently, we looked at Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And now this evening, we commonize all of that as we celebrate the birth of the baby, that gift born in Bethlehem, Jesus, the hope of the world. And brothers and sisters, don't we need hope today? Don't we need hope in our world as we watch the news and we see all sorts of scary things? We cling to the fact that Jesus Christ is the gift that holds us together and that keeps us together. We live in a world where hope is sometimes hard to find and we sometimes make the mistake of thinking if we have enough money, if we have enough fame, if we have enough of stuff, right? Do we all have stuff in our houses? I know I have too much stuff at my house. And we think if we have all of that, all our hopes and our dreams will be fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, we know that that is not the case. And because of the times that we are living in, in a few weeks we'll start another sermon series about finding peace in the world today, in the world in which we live. Tonight we celebrate the source of that peace, Jesus Christ, our Savior. God himself becoming human in this tiny baby born in a manger. And no matter what I say here tonight, what you just saw here caps it all, right? Because that is the essence of the story that we are here to celebrate tonight. The birth of Jesus provides for us a sense of hope that there is something greater. There is something greater than all that scary stuff we see on TV or we read in the newspaper or on the internet. Something stable, something long-lasting. Jesus, the light of the world, has come to bring light to our darkness. I see we've got a light bulb out over here on Christmas Eve. That blows my mind. But you know what? <laughs> For those of you sitting in the darkness, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, right? <laughs> That's right. So it's okay. We have come, Jesus came to bring light into the darkness. And I know for a fact all these were recently changed. So, you know, that's old dirty face just working on us tonight. I know that without a doubt. The birth of Jesus is the fulfillment of the words of the prophet Isaiah. When he says in our lesson this evening, For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Friends, this is huge. And the reason it's huge is these words were written 700 years before the birth of Christ. It was a prophecy, and it all came to pass. You see, Isaiah was sent as a prophet to the people of God in the southern kingdom of Judah because God wasn't too impressed with them, honestly. He wasn't too happy with them. And his task, Isaiah's task, was to call the people back to God and to foretell the coming of the Messiah, the reason they needed to come back to God. We celebrate that birth this evening. The Hebrew rulers had chosen the world, the things of the world, the stuff that piles up in our world. They opted for darkness over light. Does that sound familiar? Sounds like the conflict of the world that we live in today where people routinely choose darkness over light. In our lesson this evening, we remember these words of amazing hope and promise. In verse 2, Isaiah says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For all people. He goes on to say that the burdens will be lifted and the days of oppression and war will be over. Isn't that a wonderful message for us to cling to tonight? God will send a person who will be rich in authority. Now notice he didn't say materially rich, right? He said rich in authority. The authority will grow continually and it will lead to lasting peace. We hear those words in verses 6 through 7. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. As I was reading that a moment ago, I saw some of you going, aren't those wonderful words that we cling to that are inbred in our mind? Through these words, we're reminded that God will protect and provide for his people. He will never abandon us. 
When Jesus was born into this world, he was the fulfillment of that prophecy 700 years before his birth. His presence in the world brought light in the darkness, warmth in the cold world. And my friends, that baby born in a manger is the gift of eternal hope for all of us. No matter what we face, no matter what challenges lay before us, no matter what we know will be coming to us in the new year. And sometimes we don't know what's going to come to us in the new year. But we hold on to these scriptures and we claim these scriptures for our life. Because the world today seems to be very dark and discouraging by nature. So it's up to us as Christians to shed light into that dark world. God gave us the timeless gift of his son, Jesus Christ, so that we might have a sense of abiding presence and comfort. <clears throat> but the gift means a lot more than that. God gave us the gift of Jesus Christ so that all who believe in him will have eternal life. All who say he is my savior will live forever with him. He is the Messiah. He came into the world to save us from our sins. To save all people who call upon him and believe in him. Don't we sometimes need someone to save us from ourselves? From the stuff we get into, the mess we make. And we shake our head and we say, oh God, I can't believe I've done this again. Will you please forgive me? And guess what? He does. Brothers and sisters, in Jesus, there is no discrimination. He came for all people. Did you hear that? Can you say that with me? He came for all people. He came for all people. There are no hoops to jump through. There are no requirements other than to believe in him and to accept him as your savior. That's it. Accept him into your heart. And here's the really neat thing. Jesus loves us more than we can ever comprehend. We cannot wrap our head around that. I know I've had a year where I know that the Savior has walked closely with me every step of the way. And I know that he has done that with you as well. No matter where we live. No matter what we wear. No matter what we drive or if we walk. There is no wealth in God's kingdom. All are the same. You've heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again. Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Isn't that awesome? There is nothing you can do about it. And that love for us is what gets us through those tough and scary times like I had in this last year. We know we're not alone. My friends, we've been given an extraordinary gift this evening. I don't know if you've had your Christmas tree, if Santa Claus has been to your house yet. I don't know if you've unwrapped all of your gifts. But I want you to know that tonight you've been given a gift that doesn't need to be wrapped. It doesn't have to be all pretty under the tree. And the cost has already been paid for us on the cross. You see, Jesus is the ultimate gift of hope and life and love. No matter what challenges and obstacles we face. No matter what things lie before us. Or what things we've been through in our lives. That baby born in the manger was born for all of us. Every one of us. Whether you're rich or poor. Whether you're tall or short. Whether you're young or old. It makes no difference. And so when life gets too overwhelming. When life gets too hard. And you say, why does everything have to be so hard? Remember this gift. And this love that has been given to you. When all in your world seems hopeless, remember that for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. For each one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for that gift of that baby born in the manger. We thank you, O oh God, that we are here tonight to celebrate that, to honor that gift, and yes, to receive that gift. Thank you, O oh God, for never giving up on us. Thank you for being with us no matter what we face. Thank you for being with us on this very sacred and holy night. In the strong name of that may be born in a manger, we pray. Amen.
there are a lot of things in this world that seek to divide us. Amen? There's a lot of things in this world where the world tells us we have to make a choice. We have to take sides. This is something that unites us. This is something that unites us as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. As John said a moment ago, we're family here tonight. We're family because of what happened here on the manger. We know that when Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, he gathered with the disciples in the upper room. And he took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for every one of you. No one is excluded. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took a cup. He filled it. He gave thanks. He passed the cup around the table where the disciples were seated and he said, drink from this all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it. In remembrance of me. Won't you pray with me? Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And now with the confidence of children of God, won't you join me in praying the prayer our Lord taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, As we gather around this table tonight, as I said, we are family. And as we come here, I want you to know that you may be Presbyterian or Lutheran, Baptist or Catholic. It makes no difference to our Savior. This happens to be in a Methodist church, but it's not a Methodist table. This is the table of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so all are invited. If you believe in Jesus Christ or desire so to believe, this is something that unites us tonight. We are all one in Christ Jesus. As we come, sometimes we want to respond to the grace that God has poured upon us. One way we can do that is through the communion rail offering. Should you choose to do that, please know that's optional. But the assistance, it will go to our assistance fund that we use to help people when they come through our doors during the week. So please know that that is optional, but you may leave that as a response to God's grace if you so choose. We also have gluten-free elements that are here if you would like those this evening. For those who are assisting, please come forward. Would you join me in a prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for that holy mystery. The mystery that you loved us so much that you came to earth as a baby, lived a perfect life, gave yourself up for us on the cross, and that if we call on your name and believe on all that you have done, we will be saved. Amen. Amen. And now as we turn into our final hymn, as we sing Silent Night, I will light a candle from the Christ candle and I will pass it to the ushers and they will divvy out to you. And I ask that you, you stand as you are able to join us in Silent Night. And when this, when we, as we finish singing, we will lead ourselves and we will follow Ellen and I out. And we wish you a Merry Christmas and we pray that you go like the shepherds did. 
so many thousands of years ago, glorifying God and telling everyone, everyone, the good news that Jesus Christ is born today.